Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin currently up 0.51% to 57,647. Ethereum up 4.24% 4 to 4651. My mission is to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love, and also gain real wealth in the process. I focus on the institutional mindset. If that sounds good, please subscribe to YouTube. There is a very deep psychological level to investing and trading in the crypto market. So much so the rule 774 is really important. Master yourself to master the market. Just as cryptos have a trend, your life also has a life trend. We can make life trends very powerful and very positive, or they can go the other way. As a community, we seek real wealth. Real wealth is money, plus integrity and decency, courage and honor, fearlessness, inner and outer peace, fulfillment and meaning. You can literally have it all. You don't have to wait until you're wealthy to find inner peace and outer peace. Actually, some of the wealthiest people on the planet just don't have real wealth. Money without meaning is just another form of poverty. To go after real wealth is not easy. Society wants us to be as greedy as possible, to get the most money, more money than anybody else. However, that's not really the purpose of life. The purpose of life is contribution, and it's caring, and it's sharing, and a lot of really good things. We always fight this inner battle. Life's internal battle is the real battle. One way to continually reinforce a positive life trend, a life trend towards real wealth, is understanding how unique and special you are. There will only be one of you in the entire history of the world. That makes you automatically worthy. You deserve, because of that uniqueness, you deserve kindness, love, meaning, and every success in life, both tangible and intangible. Let's get into Bitcoin's technical analysis. We can see Bitcoin currently trading at 57,188. It's above support of 55,590, and it will come into a resistance level at 61,897. Now, why do we just look at Bitcoin? Well, we look at a lot of other cryptos as well, but why do we look at Bitcoin first? That's because of rule 45. No alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. Bitcoin literally moves the crypto market. And when you understand this, you will look to Bitcoin to understand how your beloved alts are going. It's really important to understand Bitcoin's major role in the crypto market. Let's have a look at the positive and negative news items affecting Bitcoin at the moment. One thing we need to look at is the Mt. Gox remediation. I covered that in episode 332. Basically, Mt. Gox is going to remediate or give back its Bitcoin reserve. And what do we see about this Bitcoin reserve? Has it moved? No, it's not moving anywhere. We always independently assess the news. The Omicron variant is particularly of note at this time. There's a lot of potential disinformation floating around on the internet. So that's why we always look to the source data. We can see across the world, it's spreading out. We've got 247 confirmed cases, a lot in South Africa. The UK is coming up strongly. And we can see the total number of cases, 1,226 probable and 247 confirmed. It's very important to keep source data in mind. The Economist magazine, which is a very reputable magazine, says Omicron is starting to spread around the world and it provides this particular chart. We can see this chart is not reflecting the facts. Perhaps it was some kind of oversight or something on the part, on the part of The Economist. When we look at this particular chart, James Francham has done a good job of explaining what is happening. And we look at the source data every day. We know that this is correct. You can see we're really in the very, very early stages of even understanding how Omicron will impact the markets. We'll just keep our eyes on things. 
but it will be used by policymakers in governments to basically manipulate their policies and to push different agendas. Doing a quick search on Omicron in the Wall Street Journal, Jerome Powell says, new Omicron variant exacerbates inflation uncertainty. Really, Jerome, it's very, very early days. You can see how particular interested parties will blow things out of perspective. It's really important not to get caught up in mainstream narratives and just go to the source data. I'll also explain this. On the 30th of November, basically stocks oil rises, investors shrug off Omicron worries, and now it's the Omicron drop. And you can see there's not that many cases throughout the world. People will just basically use sensationalistic news focus to actually explain something that they cannot explain and they can't explain it. If we think about what Jerome Powell is saying, exacerbating inflation uncertainty, we need to go to the source and check this out. Exacerbating just means going up at an uncontrollable rate. Let's have a look at the inflation rates. When we look at the 10 year break even inflation rate and the five year break even inflation rate, what are they doing? They're actually decreasing substantially. They're literally falling off a cliff. Jerome Powell would have us believe that they are just going skywards. This is actually not the case and it hasn't been the case since the 12th of November. That's quite a few weeks ago. That's not to say that the Federal Reserve shouldn't reduce in the inflation rate within the economy. Of course it should. It's actually diluting purchasing power. It's a form of government tax. Now, what we see is the inflation rate is coming down, but it is above 2%. And one thing we know about trend lines is that this has this inflation rate both the 10 year and the five year have actually broken below support. They're actually on the way down naturally already. So let's have a look at it. No action on Mt. Gox. Omicron still very low. Inflation and tapering, just being opportunistic. Now let's have a look into the debt ceiling. Looking at the debt ceiling, we can see that particular article faster end to stimulus as inflation outlook worsens being tied up with the debt ceiling. And this is how financial markets work. Everything is intertwined. It can be very complex. One thing that we want to note here, the Fed chairman hints at a pivot or a change in weighing inflation and unemployment risks amid renewed coronavirus threat. We know that threat is not so big at the moment, but we understand that things can get out of hand quickly. When we have a look at the unemployment rate, the unemployment rate is going down. It's certainly not kicking back up. When we look at employment levels, we can see the sharp drop off in um, unemployment, or the sharp increase in unemployment and the drop off in employment. But that's been recovering steadily. The last particular measurement was on the 1st of October. So it's increasing. The point here is the employment level is actually going up. Now we need to determine what is happening in from, for example, the 1st of October to the 1st of November. We need to understand what's happening there, but we can see quite a good path. When we look in that same article about the debt ceiling, it's realistically old news. Nothing has realistically been added to the conversation on the debt ceiling. They're not taking it very seriously, but I believe in the coming weeks that they will. It will become headline news. So we can see that the debt ceiling is really just about the same as it was for the past couple of days. They're not really taking it that seriously. And this often happens with politicians. They want to wait until the 11th hour so that they can leverage things. They're not getting in front of stuff. Let's have a look at the India situation with the crypto. 
India will be releasing a central bank digital currency. I did a deep dive on the research in episode 344. That could be quite useful to look at to get your background information. I'd like to thank Larvin and Martin, two very nice members of the community who reach out and help with information. If you have any information that could assist the community, please reach out to me on Twitter and let me know. I've provided a link in the description of this video for my link on Twitter. You can just direct message me anytime. My handle is at Stanfield Ken. Stanfield has two D's in it. Now what happened here? Basically the Minister of Finance was very evasive on how she answered a question on the crypto bill. Basically she said the past bill and you'll see from episode 344 that past bill was a nightmare she mentioned the finance minister mentioned that that bill was not presented in the past parliamentary sessions but a new bill will be presented this time and it will be more current but she was very very hard to pin down she gave very vague language and then there was another point to her discussions in front of parliament and she said that the ASCI the Advertisement Standards Council of India would be looking into the issue of how crypto was advertised what we can gather from this and some other information that Martin shared was that basically there is a softening stance towards crypto. The Indian government realizes that crypto is here to stay. They missed their chance at banning it. Again, we always go to the source data. I actually registered for an account on Wazirax, India's, one of India's leading crypto exchanges. What we can see here is the price of Bitcoin in India's local currency is increasing. When the discussion was brought out about the banning of cryptocurrency, you can see this massive sell-off in the value of Bitcoin against the Indian rupee. What we're seeing now is a restoration of confidence over the past couple of days. When we look at this, we can say that the the debt ceiling is pretty much a non-event at the moment, but will become an event later. The India crypto ban looks also like a pretty much non-event, but we need to keep our eye on it. That parliamentary session will finish in about 28 days. What we need to do is now look at the Evergrande issue. I covered Evergrande extensively in episode 321. That'll give you some really good background information. We can see that there's actually been no newspaper articles in the Wall Street Journal since we looked at Evergrande last. We look at newspaper articles simply to get a degree of perception on public awareness. What we do is we always go into the source data. Now, if we have a look at Evergrande, that's in the blue from the Chinese stock market, we can see Evergrande's price has suffered a little bit dramatically recently. We can see Evergrande in the blue is coming down. It did get a bit of a kick up. There was some good news, but it's starting to come down. And all of the Chinese property sector is going down at the moment. There is net debt of over $1 trillion is held by just these seven Chinese property developers. There's lots of complexity with the Evergrande saga. And the real impacts will play out after December the 28th, which is about 27 days away. Before we summarize all of this, we need to look at the stock markets. The first thing we notice is the VIX, the fear gauge of the stock market has spiked up. That signifies there's a bit of turbulence ahead. If anything, it could be the Evergrande issue. And of course, the Nasdaq 100 and all the major indexes are quite overextended. They came down pretty sharply. They bounce very well and they've shot up. This is really nothing more than normal price action for the indexes to come down and retest. That actually makes for a really healthy uptrend. 
However, there are a number of headwinds out in the market and they always are out in the market. That's why we don't get too concerned about them. We just track them and look to dollar cost average in, especially when things sell off dramatically. We can see light crude oil is starting to fall down. Also, bond prices are starting to get above this extremely tight resistance that was drawn from a higher time frame. I know that's not fitted to this time frame, but it gives you an indication of the higher time frame. We can see bond prices starting to break out and we can see also yields starting to come back to support. We would expect a bounce from support with the bond yields and we would expect a decrease of bond prices. We can see bond prices are literally at the resistance or support line, depending on just how you look at it. It is so close. When we look at gold, and a, a, a very nice community member reached out and said, Ken, there's so much trouble in Russia and in the South China Sea. And is there going to be war? And how will that impact the markets? And, you know, a variety of different things. And I think it's a really, really good question. We've had a continuous period of peace from what the historians tell us of about four years since the dawn of mankind. I don't know if they had historians in the dark ages. Well, I mean the caveman ages, but four years is what they agree on. Continuous peace across the world. The world is always at war. Now, gold is a really good war indicator. When gold starts to spike up, there's generally trouble. I used to trade gold, so I know gold quite well. At the moment, gold is under resistance. It's not paying much attention to Russia, not paying much attention to China. It's not paying much attention to anyone, really. We can also see that the DXY is starting to come down. Now, why do we look at bond yields and bond prices? Well, we're a crypto channel. We don't care about those things, right? Actually, we need to because crypto is just one very, very small component in the financial markets. The stock market is some 50 times larger than crypto and the bond market is greater than the stock market. So that just gives you some perspective of what we're dealing with when bond prices start to rally that actually signifies to us investors are getting scared about something and we need to pay particular attention to it but we never ever panic it's really easy to panic inside financial markets i just recently watched an episode of seinfeld where George recommended to Jerry that he go into this fantastic stock because he knew a guy and it was a sure thing. Sound familiar? That happens in crypto all the time. What happened? Jerry started checking the newspaper. George, my thing has gone down. It's lost value. And what happened? It halved in price. So Jerry did what Jerry did because he was in zone one, the panic zone, where he wanted certainty that it would go up. What did he do? He sold it. And what happened the next day? Yep, you guessed it. It doubled in price. And that particular episode ended up with George being very wealthy, shouting Elaine and Jerry to lunch to celebrate his newfound wealth. When you look at KSOne analysis, these are the four stages that all investors and traders progress through to become consistently profitable and attain real wealth. Zone one is the panic zone. That's where Jerry Seinfeld was. The price went down. Oh, sell, 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 go all out. And he did go all out. And then he reached into zone two, the blame zone. George, how could you make me buy this? <laughs> he was not happy with George at all. He definitely had a friend that was in zone three. That was his girlfriend. And the girlfriend said, what are you selling for? You should just buy more. That's probabilistic fearlessness, but you need to make sure that you understand the stock really well. And in this case, of course, crypto. Zone one and zone two are all about certainty, which just yields terror. 
as we saw in that Seinfeld episode. Zone 3 and Zone 4 are all about probability and it's all about trading the chart in front of you, knowing that all investors become traders anytime they buy or sell. Jerry was an investor, but he didn't have a trading mindset. So what did he do? He bought based on somebody else's opinion. Big mistake. Always do your own research. It didn't work. He panicked. He got out. He did the light switch effect. In zone one and two, people suffer the light switch effect because, for example, in this case, Jerry wanted 100% certainty. That stock had to go up. He wanted to be 100% correct. He didn't want any loss whatsoever. And what did he do? He light switched off. He took all his position off. This is common in zones one and zone two, as are sleepless nights, very angry conversations with other people, all sorts of things. It's a really horrible place to live in zone one and zone two. Really good to pack any bags and get out of there as soon as possible. But just understand, every single person goes through that particular process. Zone three and zone four are all about probabilistic fearlessness. It's all about having an in advance probabilistic choice. What will I do if it goes right? What will I do if it goes wrong? What will I do if it gets really boring? It's about scaling into positions at the right time. That's the trader's mindset. And it's all about scaling out of positions at the right time. That's also the trader's mindset. It's about probabilities. Percentage, negative percentage movements, if the trend is right, are buying opportunities that you scale into. It's all about patience and rules and discipline. Negative awareness is fine. And of course, you will not always get things right. So being a good loser is really important. Having inner and outer peace is critical to professional investing and trading. When we come back to the price of Bitcoin, we can see that there are a few headwinds, but the majority of them don't mean anything. And the only one that does actually mean something is quite a degree away, about 27 days away. From that basis, the probabilities would tend to suggest that we will find support on this upward support line around the 55590 mark and do a bounce getting above this resistance line at 58,365 and starting to head towards the first level of resistance at 61,897. Please be aware there are a lot of people selling around the $70,000 psychological level and a lot of people buying around the $50,000 psychological level. Many people ask about the 10,510 fund the 10510 fund is a zone three volatility fund. It's about buying sharp spikes that occur in the downward direction, not the sharp spikes that occur in the upward direction. Traders know the price is always moving in a wave. It's always going up and down, up and down. When people invest, especially for the long term, but they're not quite sure of the trading mindset, they can view these negative price movements as a sign that they got it wrong and they should get out of the market. Unfortunately, what tends to happen in these situations is people, investors tend to sell exactly when they should be buying. The 10510 fund is designed to catch long tail rejections. For example, if we were at this price, around what we are right now. Well, let's say we're at right now's price, 56863. <laughs> of course, it will be different when you look at the video. But for example, say the price dropped $10,000, a 10510 fund would seek to capture that actual movement because what we find with really long tail rejections, they tend to come down, but tend to come up just as quickly. They can be incredibly profitable and you always, no matter who you are, you must be investor or trader. You must lower the overall average buy price. And that means as price goes up, you don't seek to buy when price breaks out. You seek to buy when price pulls back. 
that's critical. You want to buy these lower tails. I'll just move this chart around so I can give you a better indication of how to deploy the 10510 fund. We always trade the immediate price action as traders, but the 10510 is all about going down to lower levels of support as far as you can go down, but having the understanding that the probability of, for example, 38,233 being filled will be less than the probability of 41,933 being filled. And that fill will be less than the probability of a fill at 45,881. These are the things to consider. Every single, the higher the probability, the closer you are to price action. The lower the probability, the further you are away from current price action. What we're seeking to do is to actually take advantage of the inherent volatility and the inherent fear that's evident inside the crypto market. Why is that? Because the institutions put it there. Institutions play a lot of games with retail investors and traders and getting inside the institutional mindset is really, really important. If retail traders panic too much, we can get those long tail rejections. If retail investors get very optimistic, we have these explosive growth. And there is a lot more to it, of course. It's not just about that. It's about how the longs and the shorts interact and derivatives and all sorts of other things. But it's really important to know that you can buy more cheaply. Many people were in this level of price action. The price was coming up here. Everybody was saying, it's going to take off. It's going to take off. It's going to the moon. And our community said, uh, no, when you get to an all time high, you've got to be careful because we always get a pullback. That's very, very common stuff, especially in the crypto market. It's so incredibly volatile. And there was a lot of selling resistance around the $70,000 mark as well. With these things in mind, our community layered down and looked at the price from a perspective that they could lower their average buy price. And that's really critical. When we were back here around the $30,000 low back in July, we were talking about that inside our community and saying, this is an incredible opportunity. This is when people were saying, Bitcoin is going to go to $10,000, $5,000. Our community said, no, it's not. The probabilities don't favor that. And look at the incredible rally we had. Price is always moving in a wave. We don't FOMO as a community. We have no fear of missing out and we don't get sucked in to FUD, fear, uncertainty and doubt. We don't suffer the light switch effect. If we hear negative news, we just put it in context. We say, well, okay, what's the source data? When is this thing going to happen? Is it mounting? The only thing that's mounting right now is the Evergrande issue. And the Chinese Communist Party, if they don't look after their people in the real estate sector, they could be in a lot of trouble. And they're really smart people. They're not going to do that. You can see just how psychological trading and investing is in the crypto market. We never want to be like Jerry Seinfeld. Well, he's certainly great sense of humor. That could be good. But the concept of saying, oh no, it went down, I must sell. This is what happens to retail investors. Always seek to be professional and seek to get on the right side of the trade with the institutional or smart money the professional traders. That's what we're all about inside the KS community. I just wanted to show you quickly the overarching trend between Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Binance Coin, XRP, Doge, DOT and SOL. If we look at the basic trend, I'm not trying to fit any kind of resistance line here. I'm just trying to show you what the trend is so you can see very, very clearly what you can see, Bitcoin coming down, ADA the same, XRP the same, DOT the same. We can see 
Bitcoin starting to come out of that particular problem, starting to form a bottom, a consolidation. We can see ADA still under a problem because it's not outside that resistance line. We can also see Ethereum just bolting. That looks very impressive. XRP is getting above resistance. Doge, not yet. Solana, starting to get there. Dot, starting to get there. One thing that I would like to keep you aware of, institutions in times like this will try to break technical analysis. They'll try to short down. They'll try to push the price down. They are the spikes that we want to get involved with. I'm just letting you know that the potential for bottom, bottom price movement, as opposed to just breaking out and going for the stars, is in the institution's playbook. I've seen it so, well, I've seen it thousands and thousands and thousands of times. They love to do it. They love to take your confidence and smash it against the rocks. That's why I'm letting you know it could happen. Just giving you a quick update on the metaverse. We can see Decentraland, Mana starting to weaken, prices starting to move below this one support line, turning to resistance. We can see Axie Infinity just a bit under resistance here, potentially could turn around. We can see Engine Coin coming back into support. SLP is looking quite unwell. It just coming down and down. One thing that I would always advise anyone that wants to get into something, do not get into a particular token or crypto that is under continued stress, negative price stress, unless you're shorting it, in which case you're already professional because you shouldn't touch leverage if you're just learning. One thing to note, negative price momentum continues in that direction until it's shifted this has the potential to keep going down over time that doesn't mean it won't spike up yeah absolutely we can see these spikes all the time but it just means you may not be safe if you get in just a little bit of advice sand <laughs> not professional advice not financial advice just friendly advice educational advice sand we can see sand coming back to support and ilv is just a standout you notice this violation of the technical this turnaround and then this fake out that's what institutions do all the time that's what i was trying to inform you of this stuff can happen and does happen alice coming back to support chr under resistance at the moment it will consolidate at a lower level or at least spike down let's have a look at the community favorites veracity just a little bit under support at the moment when we get across this resistance is going to look good icon just under resistance at the moment we can see theta cradling this is always a really really good sign when you see a particular chart like this that offers a very nice potential entry but of course don't get in at market keep on buying at levels of support price will naturally fluctuate around iota is looking quite good we've been discussing iota a little bit in the community it's forming one of those nice cradle patterns like theta is seeing matic Matic has also cradled and it's on its way up. Algo is showing a little bit of weakness. This was a sell-off spike. It's coming back to support. It needs to gain some strength. AVAX is coming back to support. And Cartesi, a very spiky, very interesting crypto, is consolidating just above support. When we're talking about the 10.510 volatility fund, we need to keep our eyes on major structural levels. It's really important. This particular level coming down here, and it will probably hit price around the 45.881 mark, is not a bad idea. It will be heavily defended by buyers. If we also look, we've got this really nice support line coming up at 55.590 that will also be very heavily defended by buyers. 
if they the institutions manage to slurp up that supply we could expect a downward movement to 50. This is all part of crypto's price action. It's always wobbling around. It's just the nature of things. Remember that negative news is never a reason to flick the light switch. I came up with the light switch analogy here when I reported a bit of bad news in the market and I saw people light switch out. It's really important not to be a light switch, be a dimmer and always seek to buy the long tail rejections whenever you can because if you combine trading mindset with the power of the investing mindset which is a buy and hold mentality you're buying at the best possible levels and riding it up all the time you'll just be a far larger blessing to yourself and those you love financially and of course if you're pursuing real wealth you will be a blessing to everybody fear is really normal in financial markets if you would like episode 349 part of the real wealth series 10 steps to master fear could be very very profitable for you i'd like to thank all the very kind and generous people who've reached out and bought me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash crypto trading ks i'd like to especially thank rich lewis thank you very much rich signs of thank you my friend very nice and perperatum i responded to your question there my friend just to let you know i always log out and you can see i never read the, any of the personal comments and I just want to say the personal comments are so very beautiful thank you so much everyone if you're new to the coffee club I put posts every month just as my way of saying thank you for your very kind generosity I'll just log in here and show you what's there there we go I've just logged in now if you just come across to post I put one of these posts in every month just as a way of showing my appreciation. You'll see something on the 10-5-10 rule, rule 305, rule 420, rule 402 and rule 40. I hope you found the content useful. Please consider sharing and liking this video if you think it will help others. Thank you very much to our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers. Please say hi and let me know where you're viewing from and if you have any questions. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, please subscribe to YouTube. I've left helpful links in the description of this video. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there, take care and see you next time. Bye for now.